times I hear people say, you know, I can't, I can't be in church right now because I won't be able to do what I want to do no more. But if you just let God provide, he'll change your want to. And you'll start wanting to serve God. It's wanting to serve Christ. And leave that old man, that old woman behind. Amen? Just be still and watch God provide.
sermon title today is entitled Salvation is Biblical, not Ritual. Therefore, don't let your traditions write a check that your soul can't cash. Salvation is biblical. Amen? It's not ritual. It's not traditional. So don't let your traditions write a check that your soul can't cash. So what is a tradition? A tradition is a, the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation or the fact of something being passed down in its way. And a ritual is a, really a religious or solemn ceremony consisting of a series of actions performed according to a prescribed order. But we have to understand that scripture tells us what to do. Amen? And rituals and traditions can show us how to do them. And so don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with cherished rituals. But don't let rituals and traditions divide us or separate us from the body of Christ. See, we're all in one body. Amen? Amen? But, but we seem to get hung up on customs that separate us from time to time. Like baptism. We believe in the CME church you can be sprinkled, poured, or fully submerged. But in other traditions or other rituals, you, you, they want you to be submerged only. Amen? So imagine being somewhere where the, the Holy Spirit rest on you and, and pulls you to be baptized, but since I'm not where I usually am, or since they do it a little different, I'm not going to get baptized. But then you turn around and walk out of the church and get hit by a truck, and your life is over. That is something that can separate you from the body of Christ. Because the word tells us that we must be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the prescribed order, but because of different rituals and different traditions, it can hold you up from what you need. Amen? Holy communion is another beautiful ritual that we do in the church. But Christ said, do this as oft as you shall do it in remembrance of me. This is something that must be done. Amen? But because some places get a, a, a hung up because you use several glasses. Some places say you got to use one cup. And you pass that one cup around to everybody during communion. So if I want to remember Christ but I'm not where I'm usually at and, and, and they doing it this way, I'm not drinking after everybody. So I'm not going to take communion. These are things that, that traditional uh, uh, customs and, and rituals that can separate us but it should be bringing us together. Also, eating from pots and cups. There are traditional uh, uh, ways that the, the, the Jewish people would wash the cups and wash the plates and pots a certain amount of times in order for it to be deemed clean. But then imagine if you're fellowshipping at another church or a fellowshipping with others in the body of Christ, but since they didn't wash the pots like you like them washed, you don't partake in the meal. But you could be sitting with Christ, amen? He said the angels could be with you and don't even know it. But you are letting your traditions run you away from the body of Christ. So let's look at the word and how it puts it in Mark chapter 7. These are, are the scribes and Pharisees trying to chastise Christ and his disciples because of what and how they are holding traditions. It says, then they came together, him to the Pharisees, a certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eating bread with unclean hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees, all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, they eat not, holding the, to what? Traditions of elders. And when they had come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and washing of pots and brazen vessels and of the tables. See, they, 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 
they were holding fast to these traditions and pushing tradition more than they are pushing Christ. We have to be careful not to distort doctrine for preaching. Amen? We can't, we can't distort doctrine from man's commandments because rituals is not righteousness. Tell your neighbor, say, rituals are not righteousness. Again, rituals are good. It's good to hold fast to some things you're used to, amen, and ways of doing things. But, but you can't let your traditions write a check that your soul can't cash. Refusing to, to take part in the body of Christ because somebody did it one way, that, that, that check will not cash. God says you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, amen? It doesn't prescribe a whole list of ways to do it. It just says be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, amen? Preach you, Christ. As we continue to go, it says the Pharisees and scribes ask him, why not the disciples, according to the tradition of elders, eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said, well, Esaias had prophesied to you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. See, when we, when we do, when we do, when we hold fast to traditions only, we, we're doing these things for the, for the seeing of men, Amen. Coming, the way I come in the pulpit or the way I leave the pulpit or if I don't have my tassels one way or my tassels the other way we totally forget what we're here for God says we ought to worship him in spirit and in truth amen not tradition and ritual be careful with man worship and be careful with always trying to hold fast as the way we always did it when we had our fall gathering, we spoke about where the church was back in the day. And then we talked about how it looks today. And then we said, what would we think it would be like in the future? And I'm hoping that we're not so uh, 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 embracing to the traditions that we forget about what's prescribed in the Holy Scriptures. He said, you talk and you do all this, but your heart is far from me. You scold this one for not washing this way. You scold that one for not talking this way. But you don't even love me. So what are we really doing it for? Amen? It says 7, says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. See, when the Pharisees can, can scold you, or, or, or those in high places in the church can scold you because of what's the way you're doing something. That gives them power. That gives them the authority to try to look at you or look at I as something we're not doing is correct. Amen? And we get farther and farther away from the word. We must be careful because if you're not careful, you will continue to teach man's commandments and be farther and farther away from the word of God. It's like driving in a car. If, you, if you're driving down the highway and you just turn your wheel just a little bit, amen? You don't drastically get off course. But you get off course a little by little by little, amen? And when the people wake up and see what's going on, you're in a whole different lane. God says stay with him. And don't teach for doctrine the commandments of men. Verse 8 says, for laying aside the commandments of God, you hold to the traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other things like that you do. So you're more worried about how things are done than what's being done. We're more worried about how this, is, this one looks or how this one is talking instead of getting people in to baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. How many have you brought to church to get baptized? How many uh, 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 souls have we won in the name of Jesus Christ? Or are we throwing the fish away before we can even get them in? Because they didn't dress this way or look that way or talk this way or talk that way. We, we, we shun them to the back of the church and keep them from coming or tell them just watch it online. We ought to get people back in the house of God so that they can fellowship together no matter the tradition they come from. 
because spirituality is biblical, not ritual. For lay, they lay aside the commandments of God, holding traditions of men. And he said unto them, Fool ye well, reject the commandment of God that you keep your own tradition. Even when it's contrary to the word of God, we find people saying, well, we just overlook it. Amen? They overlook this or overlook that. Bringing in strange doctrine and teaching into the church because it fits man's commandments. It fits those who are in power, what they used to and what they like to see. Amen? But we should also be striving to push the word of God because that is what's going to give us salvation. Don't lay aside God's word for man's commandments. He's teaching right here. Amen? He said unto them, you reject the commandment of God that you keep your own tradition, even when it's contrary to the word. He said, for Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother. Now, this is a major uh, uh, part in the, in the word of God. Amen? Honor your mother and your father. And whoever curseth the father or mother, let him die the death. But he said, ye say, talking to the Pharisees, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is koban, that is to say a gift, or by whatever way you thou profited by me, he shall be free. See, koban is a sacrifice or an offering or a gift from the ancient, in the ancient Hebrew time. So what he's saying is, uh, you don't have to honor a mother and father. Y'all just say, hey, you know, you gave me this, you gave me life. Amen. You gave me something to eat. You gave me clothes on my back, but that was a gift. How many of us have children or, or know of children that say they do not respect their mother and their father? And the things they have done for them in their life, it was just a gift. But the word tells you to honor your mother and honor your father, and you will have everlasting life. But the Pharisees are saying just call it a gift and keep pushing. That is how man worship starts. Amen? That is not spiritual. That is ritual. That is tradition. Be careful with distorting tradition for God's word because that check cannot be cashed in the ever after. He said, but you say it's, it's a gift. And in verse 12 says, and suffer ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Just call it a gift and keep on pushing. You don't even have to respect your mama. You don't even have to respect your father. You don't have to do for them. That is traditional. That's not me saying it. It's the word saying it. Amen? You have to honor your mother and father. But, but, but because we are going by man's tradition and, and rituals and, and doing things the way I always do it, you are pushing yourself farther and farther away from the body of Christ. And what does that do, brothers and sisters? What happens when we start to distort God's word for man's commandments? Verse 13 tells you exactly what it does. It says it makes the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things you do. See, when we start living for tradition and doing it and passing up God's word just because it's always done that way, then people who are hungry for the word don't believe nothing you say. It makes God's word of none effect. When I do tell you God's word, it, don't, it just go in one ear and out the other ear because I'm so used to you preaching what man says. Amen? Then when you want to finally do what God says, the, the people do not hear that. They don't hearken their hearts. They're not pricked in their soul with the word. You make it of none effect. It says you make the word worthless when you teach your ways instead of God's ways. Rituals is not righteousness. Rituals is not salvation. God is salvation. And God is life everlasting. You make word, the word of God of none effect. 14 says, and I get ready to close. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Brothers and sisters, this is very important. Like I said before, it's okay to have rituals. It's okay to be traditional in some of the things we do. But don't let it separate you from the body of Christ. There is nothing from without the man 
that entering into him that can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those is what defile man. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. If any man or any woman have ears to hear, let him hear. You must hearken to the word of God and keep that first and foremost in your teaching, in your preaching, and in your life. And as we look at our traditions and rituals, we have to understand that everybody don't do it the same way. But all of these things must be done. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You must follow the commandments and you must eat and fellowship with your brother and your sister. And if, if, if they do it a little different, don't let it separate you. Don't let it cause you to have a rift of the body of Christ because they don't do it that way. Because Lord forbid you don't get baptized when the Holy Spirit calls you. You got that feeling to come down and get baptized. But you know, it's that church, and my mom and them didn't go to that church, so I'm going to wait till I get back to this church to get baptized. That's a fool in his heart, because you might not make it to the other church, amen? You must get it right today. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we call you today to come down and accept that baptism, because that is all that matters, because today is all that we have. And tomorrow is not promised. Don't wait on the fanfare. Amen? Don't wait on grandmama and uncles and everybody coming from out of town to see you get baptized. You might not make it to that day. And if you don't handle your business, then you will suffer hell and death and damnation. We got to stop being so candy cotton in our preaching. Amen? Amen? Because cotton candy will rot your teeth and will rot your spiritual body. Amen? You got to give them meat of the word and the milk that will nourish them and give them good fruit and true fruit. Otherwise, they will go farther and farther from the word of God and start living and, tradition, living and working and preaching and teaching in doctrine and, and traditions and not doctrine. Amen? Brothers and sisters, I tell you again, salvation is biblical, not ritual. Therefore, don't let your traditions write a check that your soul can't cash. We open the doors of the church. We invite you to come and join God's house. That it is not I, please stand as we open the doors of the church. It is not I that's calling, but it is God that's calling. Amen? that you may have this chance to get it right with the Lord. If you don't have a church home and you're looking for somewhere to be a part of, those that are watching online, if, you, if you're looking for a place to be, you got to come and accept God as your personal Savior. Go down in the name of Jesus in the water and be baptized. Every one of you. Don't wait for the fanfare. Won't you come today? God will provide, amen?